Good morning. Welcome to Bipolar and Me. Hi, man. Remember when I talked to you all about how I really wanted to focus on how this was about the journey of sticking up for the providers who have mental illness and letting them know that they're not alone, there's no reason to be ashamed, and that they can be safe, effective providers who very much have a stake in the game and that you know, while initially post-diagnosis, it's a bit of a bumpy road, but if you stick with treatment, if you stick with therapy, if you stick with medication, it's all gonna be okay. Keeping your license as possible, keeping your practice as possible, and going on to have flourishing careers is very much possible. I'm on the heels of a really, bizarre phone call in which essentially I felt like I was asked to be stuffed back in the closet that despite the person who made the phone call to me who is very much a champion of me and I consider a friend and I still do wanted me to be aware of conversations that have been taking place of concerns that I live my life publicly, that I choose to be public with my disorder so that people in my predicament don't feel alone. And um, I'm still just frankly speechless over this conversation. You know, the details of which I'm not going to disclose, but it was essentially just that people are uncomfortable with the fact that I speak openly. People are uncomfortable because of the message it sends. People are uncomfortable when they are out there trying to teach their students to check their issues at the door and not bring them into school. And be, so that it doesn't quote, give them the tools, you know, that they need to be successful in the workplace. You know, I know as a clinical teacher what boundaries are and that you don't bring your disorder into your sessions with your, stu with your, with your, pa with your students or with your patients. I know that because my disorder has no bearing on my patients. It's not part of their journey to wellness. It's only part of my journey to wellness. My bipolar disorder, mm -mm. my patients don't need to know about it. If my patients have Googled me and know my story, not a single patient has ever brought it to my attention, which that's fine. My patients are fine to Google me. But no one has ever felt it rel enough to bring, relevant enough to bring it to my attention. And that tells me something. It tells me that one, they're still comfortable with me as a provider, and two, they too recognize it has no bearing on the work that they and I do together. So to have concern over me living my life publicly because I am trying to help other medical providers know that they can have a flourishing career is so frustrating. And it tells me that I am doing the right thing and I am not going to be silenced. I am going to continue to speak up and speak loudly and be the voice for other providers in my predicament who for whatever reason don't feel like they can speak up and I will speak up for you. I will be that voice. I will take us into the next century speaking up and raising these issues. Doctors commit suicide over their feelings of failure and burnout and mental illness. I don't know of cases of nurse practitioners who have done so, but I 
that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I don't know of cases of physician's assistants who have done so, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. We just hear about the doctors, but we're all in it together as medical providers, and we owe it to each other to have these conversations and take it out into the open and say, you know what, it is okay. I have a mental illness. I am getting treatment. I am getting the help I need, and I am still the same safe, effective provider you've always seen. We can have these conversations with our families, we can have these conversations with our friends, and when the time is right, and if we choose to, we can have the conversations with our colleagues. That is a judgment call that only we can make for ourselves. My practice happens to know about it. My boss knew about it from the day he hired me. I wanted them to know what they were getting because of situations that had happened at my old workplace and they were fine with it. They all knew about it when I had a relapse of the depressive side of my bipolar one and they stood by me, wanted to see me get better and were so thrilled when I came back to work. That's how it should be. I shouldn't be greeted with gossip and whispers. I should be greeted by the hugs and the thank God you're back, we missed you, like I was. That's how it should be. Not attempting to silence my voice. You know, When I'm invited to lecture to places, and the crazy thing is this all stemmed from wanting to know what I, the gist of the talk I was scheduled to give next week, I'm, I'm still giving it, to know if I was gonna incorporate my story into my lecture. My talk is on guns, mass violence, and shootings. My story has no bearing on that. It's not important. I know I'm not a mass shooter. I don't own a gun. I never will own a gun because of my disorder. And um, it's irrelevant to, the, to my talk. Not every talk is about me. So I just find the whole thing strange. I find it stigmatizing. I find it setting the profession back many years. And um, I need you guys to know that this is still going on and I'm gonna work even harder now and maybe speak even louder now. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna quit for you, the providers out there. If there's a topic you wanna see me cover, shoot me an email, shoot me a comment, and most of all, like and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to hearing from you. That's all for this morning. This is Anne, this is Bipolar and Me, and thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Friday, y'all.